right, so now that I've got my bellows uh, mounted on here for doing my macro photography, um, I built a uh, device on the bottom here to stabilize uh, this part of it with the camera body so it wouldn't be so much weight on the end of it. But the next thing that I think I'm going to do is, even though a lot of people use this control right here, running this in and out to actually focus the camera, this also affects the overall magnification of whatever it is that you're taking the picture of. So what you really need to do is set this length of this in place, lock it down. That sets your magnification amount. And then move the entire camera body and lens together as one unit forward and backwards closer to the subject that you're photographing in order to gain your accurate focus. That really needs to be done with another additional macro uh, slider which is going to make the camera body and lens all together as one unit slide forward and backwards and you can also make them to slide uh, right and left for doing panoramic type uh, photographs as well. Um, but this application being for macro photography, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to build a slider that will go in and out this way. And um, I drew up a couple of very quick, uh, loosely made sketches of what uh, my plan is going to be. And um, anyway, I'm going to start working on that next. So I hope you enjoy it. Okay, um, I'm going to continuing to make the uh, macro slider and I just cut these pieces of rod right here. I have a very slick finish. They came from a piston very similar to what goes on a hatchback car where you lift up the, the hatchback and this extends out and holds the hatchback up and I just cut it off right after the cylinder. Um, it says on there not to cut the cylinder and I really don't know what's in the cylinder so I didn't cut the cylinder. Um, I'm sure it's got a massive spring in it that's under a lot of tension and could probably come flying out of there. So Anyway, th this is more than what I'll need. I cut two of them. Um, these actually came off of a tanning bed because I work on tanning equipment. So. I had these laying around uh, that had been taken off of uh, different older tanning beds. Anyway, um, I'm going to use these uh, for my my slider to actually slide on since it's already got a nice slick finish on it. Um, it should slide down it uh, fairly fairly nicely. Um, um, I've cut these four pieces of uh, aluminum. They're quarter inch thick by uh, one inch wide and three inches long. And uh, I blued this one. Uh, nobody uses bluing anymore. Everybody <laughs> seems to use uh, a Sharpie. Um, well, at least a lot of people use a Sharpie. I I've got bluing out there somewhere. I just couldn't find it. Anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stack the four of these together and two of them, the plan is for two of them to be end pieces, and these rods are going to be going through, one's, one's going through one side, one's going through the other side, and they'll be locked down, attached, and then the other two 
will go on the inside and they will actually slide on this rod back and forth like this and that that's what's going to give me my adjustment for for my camera to slide this way or this way so um, anyway that, that that's the plan that I have uh, <laughs> my plans don't always go according to plan though uh, a lot of times uh, I get in the middle of something and then I'll something will go wrong or I won't have what I need to make it work the way I want it to work and so I kind of have to improvise and more often than not I get to rushing and because <laughs> I'm so daggone impatient and um, I go off on a tangent doing something completely opposite of what I had planned to do but uh, I'm going to try to stay on course uh, with this project. Uh, one thing about me, uh, when I do these videos, I kind of do them as I go along. So if I screw up and something goes flying, uh, then you're going to see me screw up and something goes flying. And you're just going to have to deal with it just like I have to deal with it when I'm in the middle of the project. Anyway, um, I'm going to lay out where I'm going to drill my holes at. And then uh, the next thing I'm going to do is go out there and, uh, and uh, go ahead and drill through these four pieces and uh, get that ready. So, uh, I'll get on with the next step. I uh, want to show you what I'm, where I'm at on this thing, where I'm headed. I've got this uh, coupling nut here that uh, fits this piece of threaded rod. And basically, what's going to happen? I'm going to, I'm going to turn one side of this coupling nut down to fit inside of this hole and the other end I'm going to turn down to fit inside the other hole and then that's going to set these two center pieces apart by the distance of this nut right here and they're going to ride on that threaded shaft um, as I rotate the threaded shaft it's going to ride on that threaded shaft and that's going to give me my macro adjustment so anyway that's where I'm at on it I uh, just kind of wanted to fit in on, on what I'm doing right now. I'm basically getting ready to cut that onto the end of the, the nut. I've got uh, one of these nuts chucked up in there. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and get started on that. Okay, here's the end result. Um, I adapted this uh, bellows over to fit this uh, Canon camera.
it fits a Canon camera body and the Minolta lens and the Minolta lens the reason why I went with these is I had these lenses and they have uh, aperture manual aperture settings right here on the very end uh, and a manual focus there's nothing automatic about it whatsoever um, when you when you run this part in and out right here, this actually changes your magnification ratio. A lot of people use that to focus the camera with, but it's actually for the magnification part of it. It's really not for uh, focusing. You can focus by running that in and out, but you're also changing your magnification ratio so it's better to run this out to whatever magnification you want and then move the camera forward and backward to get your focus so I built this device here and basically you turn it and it uh, runs the camera uh, forward and backwards so that you can um, basically focus it so I'm going to try to get a little bit closer a uh, little bit closer view if I can so get it where you can see it a little bit better maybe and uh, anyway uh You, you turn this right here and as you can see this part right here is moving and it just goes from one end and then back to the other end and then in, a, in addition to uh, making this where it will you know move this this way um, I also made the adapter for the um, for the tripod so that you can move this and then lock it where you want it and then still uh, be able to also adjust have adjustment here so so there's a whole lot of adjustment uh, to this thing um, also looking into uh, creating a swivel so that I can swivel the camera around and actually do panoramic uh, type photographs with it. But um, anyway, it's uh, it is what it is. And uh, I worked on it for a little while, and then I stopped, and then I went kind of went back to it and back and forth. I really haven't had a chance to try this part out of it. Uh, and take any pictures yet with it but uh because i i just i just finished putting it together just now and um it turns pretty smooth you know effortlessly just you know two fingers and it it moves right on along so uh I'm happy with it. I, I think it's. I think it's gonna be okay. I mean, like I said, I haven't tried it yet, so. But it should. It should work pretty good. But the biggest thing I was worried about was it being top heavy. Um, but this is a pretty heavy duty tripod, and um, so far, I mean, I've I've extended it nearly all the way with with the exception of the bottom slide I didn't slide that all the way and the top all the way and knock on wood it hadn't flipped over yet so anyway thanks for watching